Thank you for joining Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word. We welcome all of you joining us by television and those of you joining us online at brothersoftheword.com or social media. Welcome to today's service. Always a wonderful delight and joy to have you to tune in and join us. I would like to share just a little humor. Prior to a big family dinner, a little boy was asked to say the family prayer for dinner. And everyone bowed their heads in expectation, and the little kid began his prayer, and he expressed gratitude toward God for all of his friends, naming them individually. After that, he said, thanks to God for his excellent family, naming his mother, father, brother, sister, grandmother, grandfather, and all of his aunts and uncles. Then he started to say thanks to God for the food. He expressed gratefulness for the turkey and the dressing, the fruit salad, and the cranberry sauce the pies and the cake. And then he paused and everyone waited. And after a long silence, the little boy looked up at his mother and he said, on the off chance that I express gratitude toward God for the broccoli, won't he know I'm lying? <laughs> well, we are sharing, uh, we are sharing godly habits for a successful life and uh, we have shared a few so far we have shared the prayer habit we have shared the bible habit uh, we did a, a few sessions in in each of those and then we got over into the health habit did uh, three sessions in the health habit and today we'll we'll move on to the the next habit and today's habit is the growth habit the growth habit, the growth habit, the growth habit. John Maxwell said, he says, make time to grow a little every day. Make time to grow a little every day. There are five things that you are designed to do by God. Five things you're designed to do. Number one, you're designed to love. Number two, you're designed to forgive. Number three, you're designed to learn, improve, and grow. Number four, you're designed to serve. Number five, you're designed to increase. And so we should make time to grow a little every day. So we're talking about the growth habit, the growth habit. You can hear um, scriptures in the Bible about growth. Um, so you can hear the growth habit in scripture. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says, the Apostle Paul, he says, we're always thankful because your faith and love are growing. And so he was always commending them. He was always commending them because their faith, their love was growing. Notice that. Their faith and their love was growing. So your faith grows. Your faith should grow. Your love should grow. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18, tells us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we should be growing in grace, and we be, should be growing in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Peter 2, verse 2, it says, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so, as you can see, the Bible um, talks quite a bit about the growth habit, that we should be growing. We should be growing in our lives. Poet Robert Browning, he said, why stay on earth except to grow? If you're not growing and doing something with your life, doesn't matter how long your life is. If you're not doing something, if you're not growing, it really doesn't matter how long you live because you're serving no purpose, serving no purpose. And so when we are intentional about growing, one of the benefits of growing is that we're able to help other people grow. So you can share more with others. You can be of greater value to others. 
when you have grown yourself. And so we want to grow. We want to grow not only for ourselves, but we grow so that we now have a, a greater capacity to share and to help others to grow. So growing enables us to help others to grow. Rabbi Samuel Silver said, he says, the greatest of all miracles is that we be not tomorrow what we are today, but we can improve if we make use of the potential implanted in us by God. And Jim Somberg, he said, discover your uniqueness, then discipline yourself to develop it. You realize that you are rare, you are unique, you are one of a kind. That actually makes you very, very, very valuable. If you um, ever study in the art world, you'll know that one of the criteria for valuable art is, is scarcity. And so some editions of art, they may make 500 copies, but there are other editions where there's only one. There's only one. And when it's, when, it's, when it's only one, it is so much more valuable. And because it's rare, it's one of a kind. Do you realize God made us like that? You are one of a kind. There are not 500 copies of you. You is just, well, I started to say thank God. But it's uh, just you. It's only you. It's only you. You are rare. You are rare and valuable. You are very rare. You are very valuable. There's only one of you in the earth. So that means there's something you have that no one else on earth has quite like you. And when I say that, I mean all of your characteristics, all of your experiences, all of your DNA, all of your personality traits, all of your gifts and talents, all of your upbringing, all of your experiences, all of these things color you and make you who you are. And you are a unique, rare, valuable individual. No one else on earth like you. Man, that makes you valuable. You're rare. You're rare. You're one of a kind. You're one of a kind. You're not a cheap copy. You are one of a kind. So we are, we're very rare. We're valuable. And uh, until you realize your value, you won't value your time. You won't value your time until you re realize your value. And then if you don't value your time, then you won't do anything with it. And so you have to first realize your value, and then you will value your time. Then you'll be able to do something with your time. Listen to this, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, it talks a little bit about time. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So it's saying live wisely, redeeming the time. In other words, put your time to its best use. You want to buy back. Redeem means to buy back. So you want to buy back every precious, wasted minute of time. You want to buy it back. You want to redeem the time. You want to put your time to its best use. And one of, one of the uh, best uses of your time is in your personal growth. It's the growth habit. It's the growth habit. Think about it. Um, we, we watch, um, I read a statistic that said that on average, the average person watches um, the equivalent of six years of a lifespan just watching television. So you spend six years of your life, a normal lifespan, six years of that is spent watching television. So we spend six years of our life watching television. So we are to redeem, we're to redeem our time. We're, so in the growth habit, I want to give you a couple of don'ts. I'll give you a couple of don'ts before I give you some do's, but a couple of don'ts. First, don't watch more than an hour of television 
per day. Make sure that you guard your time. You guard your time. So keep your television time limited to one hour per day. Why watch other people's lives on TV when your life is much more important? <laughs> think about it. The television, you're watching somebody else's life. But you have your own life. You have your own life to grow, your own life to develop and cultivate. Um, and so you have your own life. Man, your own life should be fascinating. Your own life should be fun, fun to enjoy and, and watch. And, and uh, so you have your own life to think about. And so don't spend all of your time watching someone else's life. Someone uh, called me the other day, and they were, they were actually texting me if I was watching the game. They said, man, wasn't that a good game? I said, I didn't watch it. I said, I'm out here playing my own game. <laughs> I said, I don't have time to watch LeBron. I'm, 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 I'm doing my own game. <laughs> and so that's the, way, that's the way television is. You don't have time to be watching somebody else. Live your own life. Live your own life. Live your own life. <laughs> Here's another don't. Don't spend more than 30 minutes a day on social media or internet sites. Of course, unless it's career-related or something that you're using to help you to grow, help you to learn or to improve. But otherwise, you know, uh, internet sites and social media, these things can become a black hole and suck hours out of our day. They can suck hours. Literally, you look up, man, you, you realize you've been four hours surfing the net four hours on social media. So these things uh, can suck up so much time out of our lives. So uh, learn to limit. Don't uh, spend longer than 30 minutes a day on social media, on the internet. And my God, don't even mention looking at your cell phone. Oh man, how much time does that soak up out of our lives? Oh man, think how much further we would be and how much we would know, man, uh, if we didn't lose all of our time to a cell phone. We're so tethered to it and so attached to it. We're on it all the time, always checking it, always, but, it, but that's soaking up valuable time, soaking up valuable time, soaking up valuable time. And let me give you some, some do's. So those are a couple, of, those are just two don'ts I just wanted to give you, not to spend longer than an hour watching television, not to spend longer than 30 minutes to an hour, you know, doing your internet stuff. And I want to give you some do's. I want to give you some do's. Uh, the, first, the first one is spend 30 minutes every day reading. Spend 30 minutes every day reading. Spend 30 minutes every day reading for, for self-improvement. My daughter, she's an avid reader, and every night she, uh, she goes into silent mode around 9 p.m. So from 9 to 10, we know not to disturb her. So she will not come out for anything. She'll, she'll always reply back, I'm reading. <laughs> I don't care what's going on in the world. I don't care what's going on. If it interferes, if it, if it falls between 9 and 10, she doesn't care. She's reading. She's reading. <laughs> Uh, we'll tell her to come eat dinner, and she'll say, I'll come after I finish my reading. I'll come after I finish my reading. So uh, have a, have a uh, set 30 minutes a day, every day for reading, just for your self-improvement and your self-development. Uh, Remember, your life stays the same except for the books you read, the people you meet and experiences you have. And so reading is, is a vital part of our development. Someone says, never let a day go by without reading a portion of a good book, listening to some piece of good music, and admiring some great work of art. Never let a day go by without reading a portion of a good book, listening to a piece of good music. You can find Christian's music online and go listen to a piece of Christian's music. Never let a day go by. <laughs> I was watching a little bit of him 
I was wasting, uh, I started to say I was wasting my time on social media, but I was watching, a, I was watching, a, I was actually fulfilling this one. I was uh, watching Christian play something on, on his Instagram account. So I said, I got to go get my little piece of good music for today. So never let a day go by without reading a, a, a portion of a good book, listening to a piece of good music, and admiring a piece of great art. It does something for you. It does something for your psyche. It does something for your, for your soul. It does something for your emotional well-being just to enjoy the arts, to enjoy the arts. It does something for you. And so reading, reading is, is powerful for your mind. Reading is like working out. So reading is like mental exercise for your mind, the way you work out with weights for your body. And so reading develops the mind. R reading works the muscle of the, the mind or the brain. So reading works that muscle. It exercises that muscle. Reading exposes you to new ideas, inspiration. It enlarges your capacity, your knowledge, your vocabulary. It improves your memory, gives you stronger thinking and analytical skills. You have improved focus. You have better writing skills. And so reading is, reading is very, very powerful. Now, some people are using audio books um, instead of reading physical books, and that's fine. The Bible actually says that you can do that. I found it. The Holy Spirit pointed it out to me one day. He says, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 says you can, do, you can use audio books. And here's what it says. It says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. <laughs> That's an audio book. That's an audio book. <laughs> Listen to that again. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. That's an audio book. That's an audio book. The Holy Spirit pointed that out to me one day. See, you can listen to an audio book. Praise God. So they had, they had audio books way back when. <laughs> so you can uh, read 30 minutes a day. You can listen to audio books. You can also listen to all type of informative educational podcasts. Um, while you're driving especially, stats say that the average person spends about 500 hours a year driving in, in the car. The average person spends 500 hours a year in the car. So you can use that time to, to listen to something that will uh, develop you, something where you can learn. You can, you can actually, I mean, that's equivalent to 500 hours. I mean, that's equivalent to a master's degree. You can get a master's degree just by listening to some good educational programming, informative programming while you're in your car. Automobile University. You can go to Automobile University. <laughs> I told someone the other day, I said, man, if I was a truck driver, I would have about 10 PhDs because I would be listening to things, you know, driving that trailer truck, uh, tractor trailer up and down the road. I'd be listening all day and all night. I would have about 10 PhDs. <laughs> and so we're able to use, we're able to use that time to listen to something that will be inspiring and informative, educational, to increase you. And so this is the growth habit. This is the growth habit. Zig Ziglar said, he said, you have to feed your mind daily with the good, the clean, the pure, the powerful, the positive. You want to feed your mind daily with the good, clean, pure, powerful, and positive. And so reading helps us to do that, listening to these uh, wonderful audios. You can go on Brothers of the Word, man, play, play Brothers of the Word. Listen to some good information, good ministry, good teaching. But you're always in growth mode. This is the growth habit. You're always in the growth mode. Number three, you can attend seminars, events. Uh, seminars and events that inspire you to change. There's something about being in a seminar environment because normally it's different caliber people attending seminars and events. And so you, it puts yourself in an atmosphere with other people who are growth-minded, 
other people who are goal-oriented, other people who are focused on achieving. And so attending seminars and positive events, uh, that's a great way to participate in the, the growth habit. You can also visit some great places. Visit some great places. You can go to a museum. You can learn so much just walking through a museum. Man, you can take a history course just walking through a museum and learning so many new and different things that you might not have known, but you can always grow. So you always find these creative ways to engage in the growth habit. And you, of course, you wanna be around some great people, be around some great thinkers, be around some great thought leaders. Uh, Mr. Ferguson was just before service, he was sharing with me an invention, an idea. I like that, so you wanna be around thinkers. He's not sitting around complaining. He's coming up with ideas. He's coming up with inventions. And so you want to be around thought leaders, people that are creating ideas and doing something worthwhile. And then number four, to help you along with the growth habit, is to get a growth journal. So you want to be able to write down your insights, write down your ideas, things that you accumulate from reading and listening, have a growth journal. And then number five, you wanna take time to reflect. So you don't just write it down, but you periodically go back to your journal, and now you reflect. You reflect on the things that you have um, put in there so that you can um, see what you can use you take the time to not only reflect, but you also take the time to refresh. So these are things you've already learned, but now you have to go back periodically and you refresh yourself. So you reflect and you refresh, reflect and refresh. So you keep your growth journal, go back through it periodically just to remind yourself. Remember, our greatest need is not to be informed, it's really to be reminded. So things that you've learned over time Document it in a growth journal, then go back, reflect on it, and refresh, refresh those things in your life. And then the final one is uh, number seven, I believe, is find a good mentor. Find a good mentor. You'll be able to draw from uh, the wisdom and the experience of a good mentor. And so I just wanted to share, just wanted to share those seven, seven ways to help you along. Um, the growth habit, um, someone said that no matter how good you are or how smart you are, you can always learn something new. Right. Studies even show that it makes your brain younger when you learn something new. So if you want to keep your brain sharp, you need to learn something new, uh, whether it's learning a foreign language or learning how to play a musical instrument. If you're always learning something new that keeps your brain younger. And I love this, Mike Murdoch said this, and I close with this. He said the difference between today and your future is information. If you don't learn anything new today, tomorrow will be just like today. This means you won't have a future, just a longer day. Your future is in your discovery. You should learn something new every day. Praise God. That's the growth habit. That's the growth habit. Those of you who are watching by television, I want you to go to brothersoftheword.com. You can listen to this entire series on godly habits for a successful life, and in particular today, the growth habit. You can also email it to a friend, absolutely free of charge. Thank you so much for joining us today at Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word.